Hello Year 6, welcome to your literacy video for Thursday. Well done on your senses work yesterday. You all did an absolutely brilliant job. I was really, really impressed with your writing. I was particularly impressed with Nicholas. Nicholas, you did an absolutely super job, so well done. Uh, remember, we're carrying on with that writing tomorrow. Um, we're going to, going to do some reading today. Okay, so before we get started though, I just want to have a quick spelling practice because it's your spelling test tomorrow, isn't it? Okay, so remember, most of you, your words for this week are the, your rule for this week, sorry, is the or sound spelt A-R. Okay, so remember these are your spellings. We should have been on Ed Shed lots and lots this week to practice them. Let's have a look then at my spinner and see what it lands on. And then that's what we've got to do. So let's have a look. Okay, star jumps. So your challenge is to pick one of your words and do a star jump to spell out that word. So let me have a look which one I'm going to choose. I'm going to choose warm. So you've got to do W-A-R-M. Okay. See if you can do one. You can even do more than one if you fancy the exercise. Okay, let's have a look at another one. Um, Ed Shed. So log on to Ed Shed and practice for however long you want. But I'd say quick five minutes. And then come back. There's backwards. So write some of your spellings backwards. So pick a word, write it backwards, and that will help you with your spelling, fancy words. So pick a word and write it in some fancy writing. Okay, we'll do one more together. Oh, that says Ed Shed again. Let's do one more. Anagram. So that is when you write a word and you jumble all of the letters up. Okay, so you could do that for one of your words. Give it to somebody and see if they can work out what your word is. Okay? So that, that's your spelling challenges for today. I'd love to see some pictures of you doing your star jumps, of your words backwards and your fancy words. Um, so don't forget to include those on your email for today. Okay, so it's important we practice our spellings ready for our spelling test tomorrow. Okay, right, your work for today then. So your learning question today is, can I continue to answer inference questions on a text? Because I know we're all quite confident with retrieval questions, where that's just finding the answer. So we're concentrating mainly on the inference questions. OK, that's where the answer isn't quite as obvious. You've got to have a good understanding of the text to be able to answer the questions. Um, if you haven't got the book with the lion on the front, I'll be going over some a reading out of the book with the submarine on the front because we've finished the monkey book now so we're moving on to the submarine one okay so if you've got this one with the line on the front we're in this one first okay so you are on pages eight and nine today okay so let's have a look at this text so it's called Grr. it says that francesca beard is a malaysian writer based in london she is also a spoken word poet. This means her poems are written to be formed to be performed out loud to an audience. Francesca's poems often include a lot of repetition and strong rhyme schemes. Gur is one of these poems. Okay, so we're going to have a read of it together. I think you're going to find this quite funny and quite enjoyable to read. So he says, if you smile, then I will glare. If you're sad, then I don't care. If you tell me I've been bad, I will say, oh, good, I'm glad. I don't want to, oh, I don't want to, I don't like you. If you touch me, I will bite you. If you try to calm me down, I will roll around on the ground. If you try to make me stop, I will scream until I pop. If you shh me, I will yell and yell and yell and yell and yell. I don't want to, I don't like you. If you touch me, I will bite you. If you try to make me eat, I'll spit my food out on the floor. 
If you try to make me sleep, I'll bang my head against the door. If you sing a lullaby, I'll join in the key of Y. I don't want to, I don't like you. If you touch me, I will bite you. I'm the worst there's ever been. I'm the worst you've ever seen. I'm a single-handed riot. Now I'm ready to be quiet. Okay. Quite an interesting poem. So I have highlighted a couple of words. I've highlighted lullaby because I think we might not all quite understand what that means. So remember, open up dictionary.com, type in lullaby, and then pop a note next to that to help you understand what that means. Okay. Key then I have highlighted because it's got a star next to it. Okay. So we all know what a key is that we use to unlock a door. But this is talking about a song. So down the bottom of your page, you've got your glossary and it says the key is the pitch a piece of music is written in. Okay. And then down here I have highlighted riot. Okay. So that's something else. You might know what a riot is, some of you, but some of you might not. So log on to dictionary.com, type it in and find out if you're not sure. Okay, and then remember, you can pop any notes or anything around the edge of here that will help you. Okay, let's have a look at some of your questions then. Question one says, why do you think the poet chose the title, Grr? Why do you think? Is it a happy poem? Is this person happy? So have a think. What, how is that person feeling? Question two says, find two pairs of words that rhyme in lines one to four. Okay, now I've popped here a picture of a pair of socks. Okay, and that might help you. The key part of this question is two pairs. Okay, so let's have a look. So it says lines one to four, so that's our very first verse. Okay, if you smile, then I will glare. If you're sad, then I don't care. So glare and care rhyme, don't they? Okay, so that is one, one pair. Okay, that's just one pair of words that rhyme. You need two pairs. So you then need to, you can use this one, but then you need to have a look and find another two words in those, in lines one to four that rhyme. Okay, so you've got to have Two pairs. Question three then says the word yell is written in four different ways on lines 11 and 12. Why do you think the poet has done this? So I've snipped the part that it's in. So it says, if you shh me, I will yell and yell and yell and yell and yell. And yell. Why do you think that is? Okay. When something's written in capital letters, what does it normally show you? How is it, how is it being said? How, what is that person doing? There's a bit of a clue here. Okay, so she's shouting, isn't she? But what's happening each time she's getting what? Have a think. Okay, question four then says, why do you think there are so many exclamation marks after the word riot? Okay, so why do you think the poet has chosen to put that many exclamation marks? How is the person feeling in this poem? Okay, what are they doing? Again, it's in capital letters, so that should help you. Think about how loud it might be. Okay, you have a go at answering that one. Number five, six, and seven are all inference questions practicing the skills that we've looked at. So, number five says, Why do you think the poet put the last line of the poem in brackets? Okay, so go back to the poem, have a look at the very last line, and it says, Now I'm ready to be quiet. Why do you think it's been put in brackets and it's been put separate at the very end? You have a think. What's changed? 
Number six says, who do you think is talking in the poem? How can you tell? So with inference questions, sometimes there isn't really a right or wrong answer as long as you explain yourself. OK, so have a think. What kind of person would do these things? So what kind of person would uh, roll around on the ground, would scream? What kind of person would you sing a lullaby to? Okay, like a nursery rhyme. Um, what kind of person would bite somebody? So think about the age maybe of the person um, and then use the th examples I've just given. So you need to use some evidence, don't you? Like we've gone over recently to explain why you think that person would be like that. And then the last one says, would you like to meet the narrator? So again, I want you to use evidence in your answer and explain your answer. So you can say yes or no, that's absolutely fine, it's up to you, but you just need to make sure you say, yes, I would like to meet the narrator. So remember the narrator is the person that's written it. So I would like to meet the narrator because, okay? So the narrator is the person in the poem, okay? Not the author, the person in the poem. The person that's screaming, kicking, biting, that's the narrator, okay? So you have a go at answering that one. Please make sure for eight, six and seven that you include some evidence, okay? We've gone over that recently and we did a lesson on evidence not so long ago. So you should all have a good idea of how to answer that one. OK, so that's your reading for today. If you have got this book with the submarine on the front, your learning question for today is can I practice answering retrieval questions on a text? So remember, retrieval questions are when you can just find it in the text, pick it out and that's your answer. OK, so we are going to do page six today and page six is called ukuleles okay so it's about a musical instrument okay so you have got your text at the top um, with a picture of the ukulele and you've got some information about the ukulele okay and then you've got some questions to answer on it so question one says, why are ukuleles easier to play than guitars? Okay, so I've snipped the part that it's in. So it's in this bullet point. So that's the second bullet point in your text. And it says, ukuleles have four strings. This means that they are easier to play than a standard guitar, which has six strings. So can you pick out the bit of information out of there that you need that explains why ukuleles are easier to play than guitars? Okay, you answer that one. Number two, it says copy a word from the text that means the same as normal. Okay, so in here, you have got a word that means the same as normal. So it's the same part of the text that I've snipped for the um, question before. So it's on the second bullet point and it's in there somewhere. OK, so ukuleles have four strings. This means that they are easier to play than a standard guitar, which has six strings. You have a look and see if you can find just one word in there that means the same as normal. OK. Question three, then, is a true or false question. We've done these in school. So. You've got a, a statement and you've got to decide whether that's true or false. OK, but I don't want you to just guess because then we might get them wrong. And true or false really are quite easy. And I know you can do them. So you need to read the statement carefully. Go back to your text, find it and figure out whether it's true or false. So the first one says ukulele is a Hawaiian word. So let's go back. So it says ukulele means jumping flea in Hawaiian. So it is a, is a Hawaiian word. So you would write true on there. OK, so read the next one. Ukulele means jumping flea. 
So go back to your text, find where it says jumping flea. Does it mean that? Yes or no? You write true or false. Ukuleles are large instruments. Okay, so have a look for that one in the bottom bullet point. Find whether it says it's large or small, and then write true or false on that line. Okay, so that's your reading for today. We haven't got any word power work, but work now. We finished with that book. So if you've got handwriting, you can practice that, or you can log on to EdShed, practice your spellings ready for your test tomorrow, or you can go onto Letter Join and practice your spellings and your handwriting at the same time. Okay, so I will see you all tomorrow.